Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is a continuation of the Advanced SQL 50 series where we are trying to solve 50 advanced SQL problems on topics like select, basic joins, basic aggregate functions, sorting and grouping, advanced select and joins, subqueries, and advanced topics like window functions and common table expressions. In this video, we are going to solve this question called sorted distance in a line and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is the 29th video of the series called sorted distance in a line and let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called point with one column x in SQL x is the primary key column for this table. Each row of this table indicates the position of a point on the x axis. We are asked to find the shortest distance between any two points from the point table. Okay, so let's look at the records that we have in this example. So here we have three different points minus one, zero and two. So obviously what is the minimum distance between any two points in this? So distance between minus one and zero is one. Distance between minus one and two is three. Distance between 0 and 2 is 2. So the minimum distance is between minus 1 and 0 that is 1 and that is what we have in our output. So to solve this question what we can do is we can perform a self join of this table on itself or we can perform a cross join. We have learnt about cross join that if you perform a cross join of this table on itself it is going to give you all possible combinations and if you do the same thing using a left join instead of doing this using a cross join so what you can do is from this table called point aliased as p1 left join the table on itself and make sure that you are not considering the same points. So for example, the distance of minus one from minus one does not make any sense, right? Because the distance of point from itself is always going to be zero. So what I'm saying is if we do this thing, right? So from this table called point aliased as P1, if I do a self join and self join is can be done using left join, inner join, except right join, etc. Right. Self, so basically self join is a joining a table on itself as P2. And what we are doing is on P1 dot X is not equal to P2 dot X. Why am I doing this? So for example, just here, imagine this, right? So here, this is, let's say P1 and this is P2. X is equal to minus one. It will try and find minus one here. But if you find minus one, so here you are going to have second column, which is going to be minus one and minus one. And if you calculate the distances between minus one and minus one, it is going to be zero. Similarly for zero, similarly for two, you do not need to get that, right? What you need to do is when we do P1 dot X is not equal to P2 dot X, so for this row, it will say, okay, minus one is equal to X. So obviously this should not be in our output, but these two are not equal to X. So here it will populate two rows for this so minus one, zero and minus one, two. Now for zero, it will say, okay, minus one is not equal and two is not equal. So for zero, it will have two rows and so on. So let me go ahead and, you know, return both the columns from this so that we are able to see what we are getting because of this join. So if I look at my output, so here we have two rows for minus one, two rows for zero, two rows for two. Now, once you have the points, then what you can do is you can simply go ahead and calculate the distance between two since they are along the same axis, right? So you can simply go ahead and subtract and get the absolute value because we need to calculate the distance and distance is not negative. So what I'm doing is P1 dot X minus P2 dot X that is going to give you the distance and if you get the absolute out of it, it is going to make sure that it is not negative, right? Okay, let me go ahead and let me alias this as distance. Obviously, this is just for demonstration purposes. Let me run this now. Now, what you have is you have the distances between. So let me just, you know, do this select star and then so that we actually get to know like how the distance was calculated. So distance between minus one and two is three minus one and zero is one. Similarly, we have the distances. Now, we need to get the minimum out of this distance. So obviously this entire thing, when you calculate the distance, if you have minimum, right? So if I just remove this minimum of this is what we need in our output. And this should be aliased as sawtest. So as sawtest, uh, and if I go ahead and run this, let's see what do we get in our output. So yeah, this is accepted. Our output is same as expected output. Let me go ahead and submit to pass all the test cases. So yeah, this is accepted and this is how to do it. Also, there is another part of this question. It says that how could you optimize your solution if the point table is ordered in ascending order? So just think about it, right? So again, go to this and here we have the table. Now, if this, now this, 
particular example is actually ordered in ascending order so minus one zero and two and minus one zero and two so instead of doing p1 dot x not equal to p2 dot x what you can do is p1 dot x is less than p2 dot x or p1 dot x is greater than p2 dot x any of the two condition if you do that so what you can do is minus one is it less than minus one no is it less than zero yes is it less than two yes so for minus one it will have zero and two for zero is zero less than minus one no is zero less than zero no is zero less than two so yeah two so you see how the number of rows will decrease initially what we had was for minus one we had zero and two and for two also you have minus one and zero so actually you are calculating distance between minus one and two and then two and minus one twice right so that is what is making it inefficient so if you do either you know if you do either this or if you do either this and then run it, it is going to be way faster. But the condition to that is this table should be sorted in ascending order. So this is how we do it. Let me know if there's a better way or more efficient way to solve this question. Let the solution be in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.